And after that refresher of our previous adventure. Hey everybody, it's Chugga Conroy. Welcome to my new Let's Play of Okami Din for the Nintendo DS. Alright, now I'm going to go and shut up here for a moment because... That thing told me to. And after that very grim scene, our mood is brightened by the true hero in all this. The great and powerful Isun. Come on, come on, get your great goddess Amaterasu paintings, all of them hand drawn with love by yours truly. Stick them up on your house to purify your dwelling of evil. Put them under your pillow to ward off bad dreams. Keep one in your money bag and watch your wealth increase. No family should be without one, or two, or ten. The more the merrier, so how about it? Why not pick one up today? And I love that picture, too. Anyway, though... Man, all that effort and I only managed to attract one person. Like a gift horse in the mouth, you see, every bit counts. Hey, little girl, what's your name? Ayame. Well, Ayame, how would you like a painting? It's on the house. You know, I can't believe how quickly people lose faith. I mean, is nine months of peace all it takes for humans to forget? Okay, well that is kind of how history generally goes. But then no one ever said it'd be easy to be a Celestial Envoy. What's a Celestial Envoy? Seriously? You don't know what a Celestial Envoy is. An Envoy is an artist who preaches about a god through pictures, as opposed to sculptures. Ah, so that is why you draw the great goddess Amaterasu, right? Yep, that's right. But as people forget them, the gods begin to lose their power. So where is the great goddess Amaterasu now? Ami? Well, she's up on the celestial plane in heaven. But I thought the celestial plane was destroyed long ago. Well, she went there to revive it to its former glory. I was thinking about paying the place a visit someday. I mean, without me, Ami's probably just constantly napping. I can't really defend the goddess on that, that's probably true. I see, well, good luck getting there. And thank you for the picture. Thanks for the well wishes, but the Celestial Plane isn't some place you can visit just because you feel like it. He's going to stay there having those things swirling above his head for quite a while because it's a lot of fun to make them appear. See? Well, no sense dwelling on it. I think I'll take a break before I get going again. Who's the one napping all day now? Jeez, soon. Hypocrite much? Such is an envoy's life. I wonder how Ami's doing. And from completely out of nowhere... Oh my god! He's got... PAPER FOR A FACE! THAT'S TERRIFYING! And I also love Isun's sound effect here of yeah Reminds me of Uncle. I thought Ami took care of a lot of you already. So where did you come from? Question is where that came from. Y your And with that rapid introduction, we begin our first battle of Okami Din. I have no clue what's going on here, but you better beat these guys first. Hold up. I got the same divine instrument as Ami. It's not just for looking pretty, you know. Press the Y button to attack with it. 
The B button lets you jump. You can even tech mid-jump. Okay, so basic combat here. It's a button masher for combat, just like Okami is. Uh, B button to jump, of course, like you said. Jumping is really only useful if there's enemies that are sweeping near the ground and you just want to avoid any chance of them attacking you. These enemies are not like that, though. Don't forget to keep an eye on the circles in the bottom left of the top screen. Those are solar units. That's our health. So, that's simple as that. What we want to do is we want to just attack these guys like normal. These are known as green imps. Um, they were known just simply as imps in Okami, so that's kind of a subtle change, I guess. Yeah, got them. When their bodies turn gray like that, it means you severely weakened them. Attack when they're like that to finish them off. They will not try to attack you in this state. Um, and if you watch closely here, you can see that I was able to hit him one extra time after his health was depleted. That is a mechanic known as floral finishers, as you saw on the side of the screen. Um, that isn't really a mechanic that we can get into quite yet, simply because these enemies do not have floral finishers, plus we don't have the abilities that are used for those. But we'll get into that a bit later. I just wanted to point out that that was there, just so you're wondering why you can hit enemies an extra time. But with that, we did it! End of our first battle! Wow! Just like a pup to get rid of those demons in the blink of an eye. Apparently puppies are known for slaying demons in Japan. Japan's cooler than I thought. And unless my eyes are playing tricks on me, you're the spitting image of I'm um, spitting? I knew that he soon had a bad experience with wolf slobber, but spitting images? Okay. Whoa, 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 why is it so dark all of a sudden? I've got a really, really bad feeling about this. If I were her, she'd climb up to the highest platform and call the sun back with a swish swish of her tail. Hey, where do you think you're going? Now, that cutscene actually kind of screwed me over. For those of you that watched my Let's Play of Okami, you would know that people were pointing out that her tail is the brush in the comments. And I was like, what are you guys talking about? That's not her brush. It just happens to look like that. It's just a pure coincidence. Ah! And the toad voice. And yet, that made it canon. So I'm the idiot. You guys were right. Anyway, Isun's asking us if we can imitate Ami's skills right here. Uh, to use the Celestial Brush, which is the main uh, gameplay mechanic of Okami, we press the L and R button once, and we draw on the touchscreen. Basically, Okami, in terms of gameplay, is very similar to the Legend of Zelda series. You go through dungeons, you solve puzzles with your various abilities that you get throughout the course of the adventure. However, unlike Zelda, where you go into a menu and you select what it is you want from the menu and then set it to a button, in Okami, there's various powers that you obtain uh, from various deities. Uh, you can use the powers of the gods, and basically to use their powers you just draw what it should look like. So we were supposed to call the power of the sun back, so we draw a circle in the sky, but let's actually say that I mess up. I get bumped in the back and I do that, you know, and I couldn't help it. Well, in Okami Din, you can press the B button to undo so that you don't waste a usage of your brush. Already, vast improvement for how it was handled in Okami. There's some other various design choices I liked a lot more, but before I waste any more time, we'll just draw the circle in the sky and we have used a brush technique for the first time. By the way, I love this music, if you haven't guessed already. Such a great song to start this adventure off with. Hey, are, are you Ami's kid or something? How could you keep something like that from me? That's the kind of stuff you're supposed to tell me first. But I figured it out, so it's okay, after all. Only the great sun goddess herself can use sunrise at will. Wait, hold on, if Ami's your mom, then who did she? Oh, I'll give you a hint to the only person it could be. He's blonde. Let the terrible fan fiction commence. You're welcome. The name's Isun. I'm was your mother's celestial envoy, and a darn good one, too. Hey, a celestial envoy is a pretty important person. It's nothing to yawn at, I'll have you know. He really is a chip off the old block if he's yawning at Isun already. <laughs> that aloof attitude. You're Ami's kid, all right. Anyway, what I want to know is why the demons are back. Ami took care of them, so they should be on the Celestial Plane. Oh, I've got it! We need Miss Sakuya! If anyone knows what's going on around here, Miss Sakuya will. Sorry, Chibi, we're gonna have to save the chit-chat for later. Right now, we gotta make tracks for Kamiki Village, so we're gonna be going to a familiar place. Very nice. 
Now we're gonna get some more actual gameplay, it looks like. So, here he's gonna explain the ink pots at the bottom of the screen. That is how often you are allowed to use the techniques with your Celestial Brush. So you can't just, you know, spam them like crazy. You have a limit to how often you can use them. Now, something that Isun does not mention here about the ink. There's actually two separate difficulties in Okami Din. As you see here, if you use, if you run an ink, you can't use the brush. You also lose all your, you also lose your stripes. If you run out with that, you lose the ability to attack with your Divine Instrument, so your attack power also gets weaker. The difference between these two difficulties, and the reason why I'm bringing it up now, because Easton doesn't mention, is there's an easy mode where your ink gradually replenishes over time. The harder one, your ink does not replenish over time gradually, and you have to use your ink wisely. I'm playing on the harder difficulty, I just wanted to point this out because you didn't get to see me select the difficulty. But anyway, you also got a time limit on your brush, so that's kind of a way of them upping the difficulty a bit. As you can see, outside of battle we get 30 seconds to use our brush, in battle we get 15. It's not really too constricting, but it's something, I guess. Anyway, you're too young to have Alami's powers. So, uh, it does make sense why we have a time limit, though, I suppose. We're not going to be as powerful. But with that, we get the Sunrise Scroll, which kind of just tells us the basics of using Sunrise. Nothing really useful here, but it says Shibitaras, which is our name, so we actually finally know our name, is the heir to the Celestial Brush of the Sun Goddess. Okay, so sometimes the land will call for sun, so that's when Sunrise is useful. We can just use that to make the sun shine whenever we need it to. We need to be able to see the sky to do it. Nothing more complicated than that. Not really worth reading all the text, but yeah. There is our first scroll. So like I said, freaking love this song. Such a good song to start an adventure with. It just it makes you feel like that you're getting started on a long journey ahead. It's going to be a long road, but you're just excited to get started on it. You've had a nice long rest. You're just happy to get started on it. Just like how I feel right now after being gone for about three and a half weeks. Oh, white puppy, he's so cute. You hear that, Shibi? So here we're establishing something else. She can't see your markings, then again I guess most humans can't. So most humans aren't able to see that we're a deity of some sort, we just appear as a normal white wolf to them. Markings where? Other than his eyes and nose, he's as white as snow. Uh, yeah, that's right little girl. Take good care of that picture I gave you, okay? Sure thing, thank you. So a lot of you are probably wondering um, more about the setting, because Okami has a very unique visual style, and basically um, Okami takes place at an undefined point in Japanese history. Here we get a Spirit Ink S, which can be used to refill ink ponds as a new item to Okami Din. Um, at an undefined point in a theoretical Japanese history. Basically, this is a game based off of mythology and Japanese Shinto. Um, the concept behind Okami is that what if all the stories from mythology were true, and what if they all happened at around the same point in history? So, we're in a an ancient Japan where mythology is true. Love the idea for the setting, and I hope you do too, but I actually wanted to come over here and talk to this guy really quick. And by law, I have to read this guy in a stupid voice. I'm like Naguri's apprentice, yo! It's my first job, dog. I just building this house on this here cliff. Look at my hands to the bone here, we got problems everywhere! Now the sky's all dark, it feels like it's gonna choke on it, but Naguri, he showed me the ropes, yo! He got my back, I'll show him I ain't no slouch, you dig? I'm telling you now, he's gonna give me the big ups on this job! Yeah, I know, that must have been painful. I wanted to show that guy because he actually mentions Naguri, which is a guy that we have not yet met, and I don't know, I just kind of find him a little bit of a fun character to talk to. But yeah, now we're going to go to where we're supposed to go. So let's just play some Okami Din, have a good time, forget all of our troubles, and just restore nature's beauty to the world. Because this world is in a lot of disarray, as we saw in that opening scene. Oh ho ho, there's a sign here! When you get close to it, press the A button to read it. Oh, wait, I bet you're too young to even know how to read, right? Don't worry, your pal Isuna will read to the signs for you. Guess that's a good sign for things to come, huh? Huh? Okay, no, I won't say that. Alright, so here, like any Zelda game, pots are your arch nemesis. You use the Y button to destroy them with your attack. And inside, you can get things like ink pots. You can also get these rice balls, which recover your health, which I failed to mention in the first battle. Um, but yeah. Dr. Redbeard and I go way back. He asked me if I could become the leader of this ragtag town. Too bad that there's not enough people here to actually lead. I really wanted to make this a, I really wanted to, I really wanted to make this a really big but cohesive community. Bleh, geez, that's a really awkward line. If you were to find anyone who wants to move here, then give them this map. No sweat, we can do that. You hear that, Shibi? Show this map to anyone who might be interested in moving here. And Shibi, don't lose the map. Words of wisdom, don't lose the map. So these are directions to Yakushi Village. 
Love Yakushi Village just so much. Everything about it. We're actually going to be getting more into what Yakushi Village is all about later. But see, we need to move our butts to go see Sakuya. I think I may have forgotten to do something in Yakushi Village. Let's head back. Because we actually haven't gotten into the main mechanic of it here. I'll actually have a chance to talk about that here in a minute. But yeah. So, um... Yeah, now you know what Okami is generally like in terms of gameplay, in terms of setting and all that. Let's actually um, talk to the first instance of something that's a reference to something in Japan. The thing is, um, if you're American, you're not going to be able to tell what a lot of the references are to various Japanese mythology. So I'm going to be talking about most of them because a lot of people enjoyed that I did that in my Let's Play of Okami. So I'm going to be doing that here. Plus, there's not a lot of info that's readily available on the internet about it. Here we have Naguri, who is actually from the first Okami. He, who is actually from Okami, he is named after an area in Japan that is well known for carpentry, and as you can see, he's a carpenter. Hmm? Oh, you want to stay around? We're not finished working on it yet. It's hard to stay motivated when you know people aren't going to come. Dr. Redbeard said they would, but I've yet to see it happen. I mean, what good's it in if no one comes to stay here? This guy needs a better workout than Garland is, and I know just the guy he should learn from. Me! But I agree, this town needs a shot in the arm. Alright, so that one was a bit of a minor reference, but up here, we have a bit of more of a major reference. I saw the sky darken and I ran here to check out my herbs. Never thought I would find a white wolf waiting for me. How curious. I guess old man can't see your stripes either. Old man, you know who I am, Sonny. I'm Dr. Redbeard, the founder of Yakushi Village. I provide medicinal herbs to all who need them. So this is another guy that we actually heard about from the old man. And I ain't no quack either, you hear? I like this guy's voice. If you want to hear more, then swing on by to my place. Hey, Chibi, want to take a little detour and see what he's got to say? You bet. And right here, we actually have the introduction of Origin Mirrors. These are your save points. You just go ahead and walk up to the mirror and press A to save, which I'm going to do really quick. Uh, you are going to want to save often in this game, but not too often, because there's actually some reasons for that, which I'll be getting into a bit later. But yeah, now that we've saved, how about we head up to Dr. Redbeard's place to see what he had to say uh, before we take off out of uh, Yakushi Village to head for Kamiki. So we'll go in here, and uh, now I'll take the time to explain that Dr. Redbeard is a character from mythology. He is from a collection of stories uh, in ancient times that was later made into a movie known as Redbeard. So you can actually see a film on this, that's where his name comes from. It's a story about a doctor and his apprentice and uh, their relationship with a terminally ill little girl patient. That'll actually become important a bit later, but I won't specify due to spoilers. But talk to him. I'm the one who found the Yakushi Village. You get some nice rays and sunlight and some good irrigation here. If you want to grow some herbs, you need water and sunlight. I couldn't have done it without Naguri by my side. But even with this help, it's hard to get people to live here. Okay, so Isun here is going to say, I'll find anyone who's looking to pick up their roots. He'll tell them to come here. That is the main thing about Yakushi Village, is that we actually need to build it up ourselves. We need to get people to live here, and we got to build up the town. So that's how Yakushi Village is. Hey, now, mixing medicine in the dirt is just dirty. Oh, yeah. Already got a pun. I'm not going to have a pun counter, but I'm already liking this already. That was a good one to start off with, you know. Mixing medicine in the dirt is just dirty. I love that. But um, now that we're done with that, I think we're pretty much done at Yakushi Village. So let's head out, finally following the crazy taxi arrow, as I call it, and leave Yakushi Village. Pretty high up. Jump down, you won't be able to get back to Yakushi Village. Come on, let's get going. Saki is waiting. You bet we'll head out. Okay. Now, we can't do anything about this crack in the wall. Can't do anything about this bud. A lot of stuff we can't do yet. But real quick, I just kind of wanted to say, Okami did, if you haven't guessed, has some of the best graphics on the DS. It's really impressive for a third-party game what they were able to pull off. And while those waterfalls might look pixelated to you because you're seeing this blown up on YouTube, I'm playing this on a DS in my hands, and it looks incredible for DS standards. Just, if you actually play this game on a DS, it looks stunning. And speaking of stunning areas, we're here in the absolutely massive... Shinshu Field. So, already getting into some familiar areas. Get used to them. Hey now, I don't like the look of those clouds. Must be all those demons running amok that's causing this. I bet you think the same thing, Chibi. We'll worry about the clouds later. we got to find Miss Sakuya first. So, you see that circle on the map screen? No, because there's no map screen up right now. And there's still no map screen. 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 Now there's finally a map screen. Okay, you can see the circle that's on the map. The red circle that's pulsating is where we have to go. Um, I actually wanted to mention that. Uh, the bigger of the two screens that you're looking at right now is always whatever is important. So, you don't need to look over at the little one. It's just there in case there's something there that you want to see. Um, but for casual viewing, you never need to look away from the bigger screen. 
But I wanted to come over here to this house, so we're going to be disobeying the crazy taxi arrow. I know. I must be smited for disobeying it. And go in here. Right here we have the Nameless Man. Seems you can't go anywhere without bumping into a bunch of demons lately. Gate behind here connects to Hana Valley. It used to be nice, but not infested with evil spirits. Okay. What he says there is actually kind of interesting. He says, what does he mean by infested with evil spirits? I thought regular folk couldn't see them. Kind of an interesting line, I suppose. But the main reason I wanted to come here is that if you jump up here and open this chest, you get a stray bead, meaning that we're 1 100th one done now, right? No. Uh, stray beads are different. They're actually merely just an antique now. They are not a collectible that determines how close you are to 100%. They are technically still a collectible, which I'll get into here in a moment, because stray beads have actually been replaced by a new type of collectible, which we're actually going to get our first of right here. We get Isun's Masterpiece Part 1. I'm going to go into my menu right here and show you the collectibles. We want to go here and go into goods. Here we have the antiques guide. This will show us that stray bead that we just collected. It's one of many antiques. Getting every antique is a criteria for 100%. Uh, then we have the masterpieces. Isun has made five paintings scattered across the world, and you got to find all the pieces. Uh, each one's divided up into 10 pieces for a total of 50 collectibles in this regard. So there's that. Um, I suppose there's also Manifest, which we'll get into later. There's also Creatures, which has a database of all the enemies in the world. Here's the Green Imp being the first. Um, as always, I'm going for 100%, so I will be sure to make sure that you don't miss anything. But I want to save real quick. And what do you say we finally obey the order of the Crazy Taxi Arrow, because there's nothing else left for us to do here for now. So, I, I will admit, I guess I should stop calling it just the Crazy Taxi because now it's the Great Crazy Taxi It's been upgraded from a sprite to a model. I forgot to tell you, see that frame thing on the lower screen? Again, there's nothing there. Okay, now there is. So those are shortcut icons. Uh, when you get items, you can hook them up to those shortcuts and just tap them on the touch screen at any time. I want to do this really, really quick now that it's been explained to us. I'll go ahead and put a holy bone there. You start with three of them this time around. That'll restore three units of health, which is all you have right now, so very good. And then we get a spirit ink, which is a new item which we collected, which will restore three ink pots. So that's pretty good. Now that we're done with that, let's head through here, and may I be the first to welcome you back to Kamiki Village, unless somebody felt like being a jerk in the comments is like, hey, welcome to Kamiki Village. Thumbs up so I can be a jerk to Chugga and make him no longer be first for anyone who reads this. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any evil spirits hanging around here. Come on, let's go find Miss Sakuya. And just when you thought Kamiki Village couldn't have any better music, Okami Din comes out to prove you wrong. But I think we're going to go look for Sakuya in the next episode, all right? So next time on Okami Din, we're going to explore Kamiki Village and go find Sakuya. See you guys then. And as Chibi is sitting down and being adorable, I gotta say, it's great to be back.